Good evening and welcome back. This week I've got a relatively easy radio to do, so this won't take long and hopefully it'll be a nice short video. I'm sorry to say it's another Chrysler, but this one's pretty unique. This is a Model 11-4. It was produced from 1946 to 1947, and in that time they modified it so many times, there's about 20 pages of modifications to this, maybe, maybe due to part shortages after the war. Its nickname is the Beehive, and it's got the little beehive -y look about it. I got this online, I think it was Marketplace, and it looked pretty good in the photos. One thing that struck me was that it's got funny coloured knobs for a Bakelite radio. And when I went to pick it up, it, it became obvious this, this one had been painted, this radio, and these are the original knobs that they didn't take the paint off, but they've scraped the paint off the Bakelite on, on the uh, case. And when I look closely, I can still see the paint under there. There's paint around the knobs. Uh, I, I flipped it over, it's got paint on the bottom. A few marks in the case here, I hope they can polish out. But generally it's pretty good, there's no cracks or real damage to it. Now the dial glass in, in good condition, it's, there's no damage to that. The background is a bit strange because it used to match the colour of the radio of course, but I think that needs to be darkened up to make it look a bit more presentable. And it's a shortwave set as well. Somebody's changed the power cable to it. This looks like it's 15 amp, it's huge. You can barely bend it. Anyway, let's not muck around, I'll tip it over and we'll take the bottom off. Now I've flipped it over so we can get the bottom off. Um, you can see here they've still got the paint underneath here, it's got paint on the bottom. So that was its original colour, although I suspect that's yellower than it used to be. So to pull it apart, I'm going to take the knobs off. And as always with the Chrysler, they're just screws on the bottom. Alright. Well, there it is. I can see a new capacitor here. I can see a new capacitor over here. That's not the original volume control. And that's not the original capacitor for there either. I'm not sure that's the original either, so, so thinking that, that, the two capacitors and that have at least been changed. Everything else looks fairly uh, original. There's the, there's the dial string as well. Oh, there's uh, four nuts to remove. I notice that one's a different one to the other three. I'll just remove these nuts and uh, we can lift the radio out and have a look at it. Okay, let's lift it out. From the front it looks very similar to the uh, plum pudding we did uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, from the top I can see there's a uh, four valve uh, rectifier and that'll be a probably a 6v6 I would think. No idea. Uh, that's a EC32 or something. So a very conventional layout. Uh, it seems to have a choke. A bit unusual but uh, well perhaps not unusual at that time but it's, it's got a choke as well. Weird is it's just got a single dial light sitting up there. This must be clear. It must be clear that backing. No, I was thinking I was going to paint it. Maybe I'm not. Now I'm not going to get very excited with this radio. I'm going to clean it up, uh, get it working. I hope, I hope to get it working. Um, just change things that need to be changed to get it working again. Clean it up um, nice and uh, and that's it. I'm not going to go mad with this one. Uh, it sits in the case and once the case is closed you can't see any of this. So not really worth the effort. As always, I like to power these up as they come in, just to see what they do. Whether they work or turn to smoke, who knows. I've set up a meter on DC here just to check the voltage on the plate on the output valve to make sure we've got something there so we don't damage anything. Okay, I'm on a dim bulb. Uh, I've got 232 volts there. Uh, I think we're ready to go. We'll see what happens. That's gone out. That looks pretty good. It's pulling 13 watts. Here it comes. And we've got plate voltage there. Well, that's... Um, that's very dead. It's got a hum there, so the circuit's open to the speaker. Uh, what else have we got here? It's a short wave, maybe we're on short wave. Well, that's pretty quiet for short wave too. Nope, nothing. Dead as. I can see a glow in that valve. Nothing's getting through though. I can see a glow in that valve, and the rectifier's working obviously. No, that's getting warm. Okay, I'll go to full power. 28 watts, 29, still nothing. Nothing there. I'll switch the power off. 
I've just flipped the radio on its side so I can get to the volume control. We'll just try something out. And the dim bulb's working. So I'm going to full power straight away. It's only pulling 27 watts. I would have thought a little bit higher than that, maybe. Now here's the volume control. So um, if I put my finger on there, it should make a hum. Nothing. Okay, so we know the amp's not working. That coupled with the fact that I think that wattage is down a bit low and I think the plate voltage is a bit higher now, it's up to 200 odd, so that's not right. I think the easiest thing to do is just change that 6V6 and eliminate that. If uh, that doesn't work, I'll start doing some voltage checks to see where we're at. Now I've got another 6V6 here, I'll try that out. It's a bit of a shotgun approach, I don't usually do this, but anyway. Not hearing anything. I reckon that's a bit low, the wattage. Might be wrong. No. There is nothing. The volume's on full. Oh, I think it's on full. Yeah. Try a short wave or long wave over a... No, nothing there. Alright, off to... Uh, do it properly and uh, check some voltages, see where we're at. All right, I've set up the uh, digital multimeter. We'll just check the voltages here, if I can get in there. Uh, now the plate on a 6V6 is 3, the screen is 4. I think the pip is there. So it's 1, 2, 3, should be that one. That'll be the plate. That's what I had the meter on before. And we've got 170 volts. The one next to it, I don't know if you can see that one, there's one in there. That should be the screen, we've got 191, so there's both screen and plate. But if I touch that, there's nothing. Voltage, volume's on... Oh no, there's something there. Not much. Hang on. I'll just plug my phone into it, see if I can get something. You know, there's something. It's not much. Yeah, the phone's on flat out, and that's all I'm getting. All right. That sounds terrible. I'll just check the grid bias. It should be number five. What have we got? 0.7. And the cathode's down here. I think it's that one. I'm sure it's that one. And that says zero. So that's probably going straight to ground. So we should have about uh, ooh, eight to nine or so on the grid there. All right, so that capacitor needs to go. Okay, I've tacked a new capacitor in there. I didn't cut the old one out, I just tacked that in to see how we go. Go to dim bulb, 14 watts, that's good. Let's go flat out there. The old capacitor was 0 0.02, it should be a 0 0.01. So I don't, somebody's um, changed that at some point, that's not one of the original caps. I'll just try that volume, there it is. So that's better. It's not fantastic, but it's better. I'll just check the voltage on the grid. I can check it here, kind of. Ah, there we go, we got minus nine, nearly minus 10, that's terrific. Okay, that's great. Now I'll just try my music again. All right, that's, uh, that's working much better. We're still not getting any radio. There's something there. It's just what no, it's dirty. Switch needs a bit of a workout.
I'm not sure that's totally that's wrong there. It sounds like a valve. Oh, there's something wrong. Oh, there's something <laughs> something loose somewhere. I thought it was that switch, but I don't think it is. It's not the volume, tone. No. Hmm. It's completely silent now. What? not something about the interest rates or access to credit um it's after race nine we've got coronavirus well that's actually working pretty good now the intermittent fault was the aerial wasn't done properly the wire that's coming out of it's very brittle and i'll have to change that so uh, I put the aerial back on and uh, it's working fine now. It's good. Just thought I'd check this old valve that was in there that may have been the problem. So I'll just put some power on it. We're on uh, 6 volts triangle, we've got it on short. And uh, that's on zero, so we just check for shorts. It should come on for 7 only. Okay, that's okay. Now we need the selector on 5. Put it down to test. And 30. Nothing. Nothing at all. Well, that fell as dead as a dodo. All right, that's why it didn't work. So I think that was the main issue. Now, I've got another one in here. This is another spare. It's not the one that's in the radio now. Uh, check for shorts again. Seven's okay. That's all right. Back to five. And go to check. And here we go. So that one's all right. This is the one that's in the radio now. I've just taken it out of the radio. So get it on. Everything's okay. I'll turn it down. Okay, we look for the shorts. As I say, it should be only number seven. There it is. It's fine. Back to five. Test. 30. Well, that's only marginal, isn't it? So the uh, second one I tested is the best. Well, there you go. That was the, that was the issue. The, uh, the original 6v6 has uh, failed. I was going to try and explain why the 6v6 output valve has failed. Here's a simple schematic of what the valve looks like. It has a heater, it has a cathode, it has an anode, which we call the plate generally. There is another screen in here, I've left that out. I don't need that for this uh, exercise. As in any valve or tube, it has a heater, it has a cathode. The heater heats the cathode, that frees electrons here. This plate is positive compared to the cathode. These negatively charged electrons are drawn towards the plate. Now the plate has a positive voltage on it from the power supply. It goes through the output transformer, comes along here and sits on this plate. This plate in our situation is at about 200 volts. Doesn't matter, I'll just round number it. And the cathode is at zero volts. It's connected to ground, it's at zero. The free electrons are just going around a circuit here. Coming back, just going around and around, you have a fair current draw through there. So to make all this work, we put in a control grid. Now the control grid in our case was and should have been minus 10 volts. Now the 10 volts is achieved further back in the radio here. I won't worry about that now. So you've got 0 volts here, you've got 200 volts here, and you've got minus 10 volts here. This grid inhibits the electrons going through because that's negative, that's negative, negatives repel. So the electrons don't go up, they can't get through. Some will go through to the plate and you'll get some current flow. Now our audio signal is coming in here from the receiving end of the radio. It also has a DC component, which is quite high. So here you've got DC plus your signal. A serviceable coupling capacitor only allow AC to get through, or an alternating signal. So the DC is blocked by this capacitor, and all we have now is our audio signal. When it's in the positive phase, it allows more electrons to flow, and they will flow up and hit this plate and that'll be amplified up to the top here. When it goes negative it tends to stop some of the electron flow so that reduced electron flow is then represented up here amplified again 
like that. And so it goes on. Ideally, it doesn't go past the point where it makes this grid greater than zero. Now with the radio in this case, this coupling cap was leaking internally some DC through. So we also had some DC here, which counted this 10 volts here, this minus 10 volts, and made it zero. So we ended up with zero volts. With the grid at zero volts, it can't control the electron flow from the cathode to the plate as effectively, and you get an increase in current. It's not controlling it. The current increases, it goes through the system again, and you exceed the, the limitations of the valve. So either the valve will go, or the output transformer will uh, go with the increased current flow. So I was lucky with this radio, this valve failed and didn't take out the output transform, which I'd have to go and try and find a replacement. So there's the failed capacitor that I took out of the radio. I always replace this capacitor unless it's been replaced previously and it tests okay. Even then, I'm prone to change it anyway. Uh, this one will cause you grief. Now someone will comment and say you should change that before you even put power on, but I'm not learning anything if I just change all the bits. Um, I want to see what happens and what it sounds like. We could hear the distortion uh, when this capacitor was in. So now I know what a failed one of those capacitors sounds like. Uh, I didn't run it too long, hopefully to just cause any other issues. So that's my explanation of why that valve failed. Now I do have the valve here and I'm thinking I might crack the glass and uh, just have a look inside and see what part of it actually failed. Okay, I've broken the glass envelope and uh, here's the inside of the valve or tube. So this can on the outside will be the anode or the plate. Uh, it's got two supports there. One will be have power going to it. Uh, the two inner ones there are the filament. That those two there will be supporting the grid, and I would think one of those will be the screen, and one of those will be the cathode. Uh, so here's the orientation locator for the valve. Uh, so that's pin one working clockwise from underneath. So pin two, pin three is the plate. So I'll put a clip on there. I've got the buzzer on the meter, so we should just be able to hear the buzzer. So that's the plate. Okay. So three. I think four is the screen, which will be one of those. I think it's that one. Yeah. And five will be the grid, which will be that one. Yeah. So they're all working. Uh, pin eight is the cathode. And that's it there. Now those two are the heater, and I'm not getting any of it. It says the heater's open circuit. Uh, that was working, the heater was working, so I, it may have broken when I threw the valve on the ground to break it. <laughs> so, uh, but that was working, so I can't see anything not working. Uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'll take this, I'll cut this plate out, and uh, we'll see what's inside. All right, I've managed to get the plate off. Uh, there was a mica type uh, material on top, I took that off, and then I cut it away from the bottom here. So that's the plate. As I said before, there's the filament there. Um, the cathode is that tube around the um, filament layer there. This is looking from the top down. There's the filament right in the middle of that little tube. That tube is the cathode. That tube there comes out here and it goes to these two screens over the side here. Don't really know what the function of that is. Uh, they are drawn in some of the uh, schematics for the tube. I've pulled these two screens apart so you can see it a bit better. There's the cathode down the centre. It's got the filament inside heating it. The next one out is the gold bars there. They've got wire wrapped around them and that's the grid. There's another set of windings on the outside which are the screen. Now strangely I can't find anything wrong with it except the filament doesn't work. But I know the filament worked because I did a filament check this morning with my second um, valve tester and uh, it, it was fine. You could see it glowing. So I, I think it's broken. So I don't really know why it didn't work. Still, it was interesting just to see, um, you know, inside. I've, I've never actually looked at one. I've thrown plenty of broken tubes out and never thought to check one, let's see where they're made. There's no hum, but I'll change these two capacitors anyway. Uh, and I'm going to change the wax capacitors that are in there. There's not that many. Uh, I'll leave the ones here that the gentleman's put in, whoever's done it before. If it was a gentleman, whoever. There's another one of those white uh, replacement wax capacitors like that one that's failed. Uh, so I'll change that for sure. There's one of those black wax things that just fall apart. I'll change that one. Alright, well, I'll get started. I'll change the capacitors out and um, we'll try it out again after I do that. I won't bother you with uh, me changing capacitors for two hours. So I'll come back very shortly. Well here's the bottom after I replaced all the caps and there's caps there and I've replaced that one and there's one in here, one around the side here. 
and I've used uh, Carl's fabulous black caps you can't even see them they don't stick out like the yellow ones uh, look much better if you want to get some of Carl's caps these uh, link is in the description so there's the uh, two electrolytics and there was not wasn't that many caps in there actually I also replaced this resistor it should be uh, what 600k 0.6 for meg that was reading 1.2 so I've changed that I checked all the other resistors they were okay so I think it's time to give it a test so I put some power on globe is working normally I replaced the lamp dial lamp we'll see what it looks like Let's turn it up a bit okay I'll just turn it down, I'll put it on full power, that's working alright. The Australian cricket team is turning its attention to New Zealand after returning home from a 3 0 series loss in South Africa. Paceman Pat Cummins says that. Volume control's tight. That's a very weak station, so that's coming in pretty well. Normally get a lot of noise with that, so that's good. Bit of a noise when I wobble the valve. So I'll clean the clean the contacts while I'm in there. That's working pretty well. I think what I'll do now is take it out in the workshop and I'll just clean it up a bit. I need to change the rubbers on the tuning capacitor or tuning condenser and uh, just fix up some uh, stuff. I've got to restring it as well. So I think the next stop is the workshop. I'll just get ready to wash it. I'm going to take the uh, valves out, of course, or the tubes, whatever you want to call them. Okay, the valves are out. Um, this shield's a bit strange. It's not, no rust on that, and uh, it's rusted on the top. It doesn't feel like aluminium. I don't know. Anyway, I'll put some rust converter on there and just uh, try and remove that. So I've got a bit of solvent here. I'm just going to try and clean it off with that. I'm just going to blow it off with the air gun. So I think that's about as good as it's ever going to get. Dunk a bit of the solvent in a, on a wire brush to see if that's uh, any any more uh, effective. Well, it's, you can't, can't quite get into everything with the wire brush, so I'm back to the paintbrush. I just want to take the glass out. There's a little plate across the top here and they've twisted the metal to hold it in. It's got rubber either side of the glass there. It's not going to move. I don't want to break it. That's not going to come out. If I try and move that, it's going to break it. If it doesn't break it, it's going to take the paint off because the rubber is stuck to where the paint is. So I'm going to leave it. I'll clean it in situ. I should be able to get behind there with something and and clean it out. So I'm going to leave that alone. Another job I have to do is this tuning capacitor. The rubber mounts are, uh, are gone on it. So I'm going to undo the nuts and uh, hopefully I can change the grommets without removing the capacitor and, uh, and I'll put some new ones in. The first one I'm going to do is this guy in here. You can barely see it amongst all the junk there but I can get a screwdriver on there. I'll just remove all the uh, screws and nuts Okay, all the screws are out. I'm just going to see how much I can get. Yeah, not enough. So I'm going to let go of the string on the front here. I'll just take it off the pulley. It should be able to go back on again. Okay. Yeah. Let's see if that gives us enough. Barely. This one I can't do from the bottom. Some of the, the other two I might be able to do from the bottom. Oops. Well, there's what's left of it. It's hard as a rock. Probably still doing its job, actually. Maybe it didn't really need to worry about it. Oh, well. Now, the old grommets were quite big and with a small hole, but I don't have anything like that. So I've got a large grommet, and I've put a smaller grommet in the centre of it, 
and uh, hopefully that'll uh, suffice. So I'm going to try and fit that in that hole from the top and I can't see it so it's good. I think that's I think that's actually gone in. I'm just going to try and get the little grommet in the middle there. Oh, that's easy. There you go. So that's in and that'll that'll be good. I'll uh, do the other two and I'll come back. I've got all the rubbers in and all the uh, screws in. So I just got to put the nuts on and I'll see how they go. How they tighten up. That looks pretty good. I'll be a bit too tight. I'll just back it off a little. We'll see how we go. Okay, good. All right, try the second one. Yeah, that looks good too. Good. So I'll do the last one and I think we'll call that quits. I think that's come out pretty good. There's, it's just got a little bit of give in it, but it's it's sturdy. So I think that's pretty good and uh, the rubbers look pretty good. So happy with that. The next fun thing to do is to put the string back on here. Now that's what I've got. There's a spring and a couple of bits of broken string. Now it shouldn't be too hard to work out. It's just got to go up here, around there and back there. So uh, when we turn it... So that way the needs to go that way. Now there's a knob there which that strings attached to and there's a knob there which the old strings attached to so I think that's a good starting point. So I'm assuming a tie knot around there and just come out here and around there. There's my little knot. Stick it in there. Around there. And I'll pick up this thing later. I'll just run it past at the minute. And then up there. Easy. Now I'll just mark this like I always do with a, with a uh, bit of ink to uh, show me where I want the spring to go. Alright, I've tied that on. Alright. Cut that old string out of there. I'm going to cut my new one. That should duck in there somehow. I'm thinking, I'm hoping. No, it doesn't. Really? It doesn't either. Blast. Okay. Alright, plan B. i going to take that off. Take that off. I'll just pass it through here first. That goes on there. Up to there. Around there. There you go. Around there. Stretch the spring. And on there. So what it looks like originally they had a bit of wire braid on that and soldered onto it. So uh, so what I'm going to do is reshape that slightly and uh, that'll hold that down and uh, I'll put a bit of uh, adhesive on it once it's aligned. That should do it. That'll hold it and some adhesive on there when it's finished. That'll be fine. Alright, so that's good. Well, that's good. I'll just tidy up the strings, do a double knot and uh, I'm happy with that. Now some of these valves were a bit intermittent so I'm going to clean the uh, sockets out and I've got a pipe cleaner this has been suggested by lots of uh, commentators so I'm just going to spray it with deoxid which I normally just use anyway and but I can use the pipe cleaner to run through and uh, hopefully uh, make them a bit cleaner also the valve end I'm going to use my uh, little uh, dremel with a wire brush on it and uh, brush those up and then I'll cover them with deoxid as well I'm going to use, I'll use that on all the valves and clean them up hopefully. I'm not sure how it's going to come out on the camera here but those uh, sockets have come out pretty good. They're nice and 
brassy clean, so that's pretty impressive. I said I use Deoxit as a cleaner, and some may not know what that is. It's a spray can that you get that's called Deoxit D5. Well, we're knocking this over at a great rate, so uh, I'm going to replace the wires on these two um, grid caps. They're just uh, they're falling apart, so I'll change them. I think that's it for the chassis, and I'm going to move on to the case now. I've put contact cleaner on these uh, all the switches. Now I've cut off the little bits of uh, string that were hanging out. I've uh, tied off the, the knots with a double knot and I've put adhesive on it and I've applied adhesive to the string in here so uh, that's all set. Around the back this shield was uh, rusty on the top there. I removed it with some rust remover and I've just put a clear coat on it to, to seal it up so it looks like it was originally. I replaced these grid wires as well. Now I took the cursor out of here and painted it and then put it back. Um, not an easy job but it's hard to get out because I can't get the glass off. Normally you just lift it away. I couldn't, it was hard. I had to feed it in from the bottom. I checked the alignment. Uh, these were spot on. I, I moved them slightly and uh, decreased. So I've just put them back to where they were. Uh, I slid the cursor along the front here uh, to line up with uh, 600. And uh, it, it's perfect. It tracked perfectly and uh, didn't need any adjustment at all. The short wave is uh, spot on as well. So, so this has been aligned at some point not that long ago, I'd say. The chassis is cleaned up pretty good. It's um, not as good as I would have liked, but um, it looks all right. It's quite clean and presentable now. It uh, performs very well. Uh, um, sounds pretty good. Nice and clear. Um, good selectivity and sensitivity. It's, uh, the thing was, Sweet Marsha didn't quite fit the song, so he made it Sweet Caroline. Um, in researching this book, I came across some extraordinary interviews with people who had previously been absolutely cynical, as most of us are about it. So if I took that outside now and uh, plugged it in an aerial outside, it would work pretty well. Uh, it would get a lot of interference in here, so but uh, it is working very well. Well, that's it for the chassis. Uh, I think I'm going to have to break this video into two parts, so this will be the end of part one. And next week we'll uh, work on the case, and I'm going to try and reproduce the Chrysler badge. That might be interesting. So I hope you can join me next week for my next Chrysler 11-4 radio adventure. <music>